Good morning, Michael. Oops, <laughs> sorry. I didn't mean to show you myself here. And there is Celine. She's here with me this morning. And maybe you realize already that Celine is starting a new chapter. But here we are in Jerusalem. And the reason we're in Jerusalem this morning is because the papal nuncio is coming to celebrate mass here in Notre Dame where he is our uh, he is in charge of Notre Dame he is the prelate of Notre Dame he is the papal nuncio like the ambassador to from the Vatican to the state of Israel he's also the papal representative to uh, the Palestinian authorities and he is also the delegate to Jerusalem besides also being the papal nuncio for Cyprus so this is the this is the um, uh, today is his first day coming here to celebrate mass he's a new appointed nuncio so we came we're all um, part of the community here at Notre Dame so we came to welcome him and participate can celebrate mass at nine o'clock i will still celebrate mass god willing this afternoon in in magdala because we're going back for a couple of other reasons really quickly at the end of the morning but here we are in jerusalem so we're doing our live stream here from jerusalem and the gospel today is very beautiful the readings are from isaiah they have the blind will see and the deaf will hear and the dumb will speak and the lame will walk and the messianic times will be fulfilling will bring the great blessings to people and so we have this great uh, gospel today when jesus heals a person who is both deaf and dumb on other occasions he cures a blind man actually here in jerusalem also there's a healing of a blind man at um, in the city of of david at the pool of siloam and he also heals a paralyzed man at the pool of bethesda which is down here uh, at the just at the inside the old city at bethesda where we have today saint anne's church so this morning is a little special because Celine has some news to share with you and I let Celine tell you the story. My sister Celine who has been serving here for the last five years in in can you speak up a lot louder? You need to speak louder. pilgrims in Magdala and also throughout the whole Holy Land which has been a beautiful experience for me and now it is the day when I set sail for Ireland I'm going to be uh, with our 84 young teenagers who will arrive on Thursday and Friday to Woodlands Academy to learn English and, and live out a school year a wonderful year to prepare them for life the majority of them will be married someday in the near future uh, even though they see it very far off and we know that a year like this of spiritual formation, human formation, intellectual formation and among each other learning to share and to forgive one another all this will help them for their future families. Celine, tell us about your experience here for five years in the Holy Land. Five years, right? Yes, five years and three months. Yeah, we're going to look a little bit occasionally <laughs> yes. around the sun and you'll be closer to the camera so they can hear you better. So what okay. is your experience here for these five years in the Holy Land? Well, I, it has been extraordinary. And even from the first moment when I was asked if I had any objection to coming to the Holy Land, <laughs> of course I had none. 
I already, my heart was jumping with joy to, to spend time in Jesus land. And every day I felt the same joy to this very day, which is a great blessing to be so filled with, with joy in the Holy Spirit and to experience the places where Jesus walked and lived and suffered, died and rose and appeared. And from here he ascended to heaven and he has sent us out to the corners of the globe to bring the good news. So I think Mary Magdalene, according to tradition, went off to France because being expelled from the country in a moment of persecution on a boat, the boat miraculously landed there at the, at the south of France. And there's a whole story about that and how she ended her life as a hermit on, um, up on the mountain at um, very near Marseille. So I just feel a little bit like that this morning, coming to Jerusalem, where she experienced the resurrection of Jesus after walking with him the way of the cross and suffering his passion and death, firmly standing with Mary at the foot of the cross with so much love because she never forgot what Jesus did for her. So I hope that will be my uh, continued experience to never forget the love of Jesus and to bring that to everybody I meet and to these 84 girls who will be coming and all our staff at Woodlands. So there under the big dome we have the tomb, uh, the empty tomb of Jesus and behind it to the right of the smaller dome with the bigger cross is Calvary and there we remember the uh, there's Calvary there's where Jesus died and there was Mary Magdalene as Selina speaking about that and she went to the tomb and was talking to the whom she thought was the gardener and tell me where his body is and then she had the joy of being the witness to the resurrection so this is a great a great uh, accomplishment Selina can you tell us a little bit about the uh, women's encounter at the beginning of March yes um this has been a wonderful experience to have the women's encounter every year uh, around International Women's Day, so usually the beginning of March. And uh, women come from all over the world. Of course, recently we've just had local women coming and some who work here in the Holy Land who are from abroad because of the pandemic. But next year, God willing, uh, there will be many of you coming to the Holy Land, timing it to be here, hopefully, God willing. Um, in March and it's an experience of uh, inter-religious uh, sharing and caring and humanity so it's based on values and uh, spirituality that every person holds in common with their neighbor whether they be Jewish or Christian Muslim Druze and even those who do not have faith they have some spiritual experience and components in their lives and we try to build on that and that's been a very beautiful experience. And what was uh, the theme of the women's encounter this past year? Uh, we had the hospitality of the heart. So each year in the experience of the encounter, we have one day where we dedicate time to art because art is a beautiful expression of very deep sentiment and very deep experience, human experience. And uh, this year it was about the hospitality of the heart, as I say, and we had local artists uh, come and share their beautiful work. You can see that still on um, Facebook and YouTube. You can look at those beautiful um, works that they did and their explanation of them and the connection with hospitality. One beautiful item stands out of that day was a chair that Valerie Taha found, and she's uh, from Cana. She found it tr thrown out in the trash and she picked it up, brought it home, varnished it, fixed it up, painted it, made a really beautiful chair with blue um, upholstery, well, blue painted, and with birds and flowers. It was very beautiful. And she said, this chair is like the people we meet. They maybe feel that they're out in the trash or they're worthless or useless, and we bring them back and we show them love and we acknowledge their dignity. And also a chair is where you sit down and have a chat and have a cup of tea and share from the heart. And uh, this is a very beautiful sharing that she did in the art exhibit. And um, Laura uh, also did a very beautiful piece on um, one of her icons is when uh, the four people are letting down the paralytic, but she pictured herself as the paralytic being let down in front of Jesus in this beautiful icon and how that is her experience of feeling Jesus healing her and strengthening her, which reminds me of our upcoming healing um, pilgrimage here in Magdala. It would be a beautiful experience for you to sign up and let friends know. I know we have
have already over 50,000 people signed up. So that would be a wonderful. And uh, it depends on each one of us. There may be someone who could benefit from that too, because we all are a little bit broken. We need the help of the Lord for healing. Then the second day is dedicated to a retreat. And um, actually that was something I studied in my master's degree at Loyola University, the spirituality of St. Ignatius and the spiritual exercises. So I tried to apply that with the composition of place in the Holy Land, and going back in time to when the women walked that land and even the women of the Hebrew scripture from ancient times and the example they give us and the experience they had of Christ's healing touch and how they never forgot. And these women were close to him at Calvary and they went to the tomb and they are there at the resurrection, the great witnesses um, who never forgot what Jesus did for them. They were so in debt that they stayed close and faithful to the end. Wonderful selling. And we had the talks of the, um, the, the uh, a woman who gave, who did her studies on yes. hospitality. Yes, the third day we usually try to go for a good, solid conference with a lot of content, a lot of substance. And this year it was uh, Dr. Mary Schwartz who spoke of her own experience studying um, the metaphysics of hospitality by Gabrielle Marcel, a French philosopher. And she did a beautiful job bringing it down to everyday life situations and sharing from the heart as a woman who studied this aspect of hospitality uh, from the philosophical standpoint. And that day, of course, we invite in all our other uh, faith background friends and neighbors here. And that was very beautiful to see how they shared what hospitality looked like in Jewish, Christian, Muslim and Druze traditions. So I hope that sparks a lot of um, new ideas of how we can reach out to one another and show hospitality in our homes and our extended family right now that needs so much, our neighbors and everyone who uh, needs this loving, warm welcome to our uh, circle, to our experience. And you can find all of this on, as I said, on YouTube and Facebook. And I think my brother will kindly put up the links at some point for you to see them there. So people, our time is rolling and this is a, a great morning. Celine is saying goodbye to us today and I hope you pray for her, for her new mission. Thank you. And she's going to be praying for all of you. Thank you and God bless you. So I think we still have one or two moments before we finish and particularly to remember the healing today that Jesus does to open our ears. And if we look, combine that with the second reading, our ears are capable of hearing the cry of the poor. To have that ability. And when we open our ears and we listen, then we can talk. Because we listen and then it's amazing how people who have a challenge listening, how it's difficult for them to talk. And how the two abilities to listen and to speak go together hearing, hearing also God's word and being able to speak then to praise him for his wonders and to be able to obey, hearing and obeying. My dad used to say to me, Eamon, does anybody, do you hear me? <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> because it's part of listening to also to God's will. Are, are we listening? Are we listening to God's will and adapting and following? We, we pray for this healing of our hearts today and the blessings of our Lord. So goodbye from Jerusalem this morning. It was great that you joined us and checking in here for in this very short visit to Jerusalem this morning, uh, back for the special events here. Please pray for the new papal nuncio, for the delicate mission that all people have in, in diplomacy, representing uh, interests and representing positions about life and about justice, about peace, about understanding also encouraging all those who are uh, in the church who are serving and then pray especially for my sister Celine so that now in Ireland she can continue bringing all the torch burning from the Holy Land to to all those she will work with in Ireland and especially the children who come from overseas to learn English thank you Celine for joining us this morning God bless you thank you all so people here we are uh, see you later alligators Let's try and do a little selfie here. You're there, you're there.
And now we have the bell of the Franciscans. God bless you. See you later, alligators.